it's Mr. Edgy Games Duck. I'm here, and today I'm gonna do a little bit more modern anthropology because it's one of my favorite things to talk about, and you guys are gonna have to sit and listen to me talk about it a lot because we're doing room vlogs now, and I get to talk about it a lot. So today I'm going to be talking about um, something I actually wrote an essay on yesterday, which is one of the most popular Japanese street fashions, at least it was in the mid in the early 90s to mid 2000s, called gangudo. And I'm sure many people watching this are familiar with it, but if you aren't, it is a, like I said, a Japanese street fashion in which um, usually Japanese girls um, tan their skin to make it very dark and bleach their hair to make it very light. And it was created to rebel against traditional Japanese beauty standards, um, it, where it was standard to have very porcelain white, uh, very light skin, so gangudo girls painted or painted, tanned their skin and they bleached their hair because the common Japanese beauty standard was to have very dark hair. And ever since Gangudo absolutely took off, um, the main capitals of Gangudo being Shibuya and Shinjuku, and it was super big. Anyone who was on the internet in the early 90s to mid 2000s, or well, I guess throughout the entire 2000s, because I wouldn't have seen it in the mid 2000s because I was an infant. I definitely saw it when I was in my early internet days. Um, have definitely seen the street fashion, and it has evolved beyond just rebelling against traditional beauty standards um, to being a street fashion on its own. Something I forgot to mention is actually um, more about the look of Gangudo, was um, Japanese beauty standards definitely very much favored, very modest and natural looking makeup, while Gangudo has very bright neon makeup and face stickers and lipstick and all of that kind of stuff to definitely very br much bring out their faces as well as um, the they wear very bright clothing to rebel entirely against the very modest um, doll like beauty standard and they're often actually considered in Japan very um, rebellious as well as um, which I'll go into in another video the um, kawaii kind of um, dressing lolita kawaii that kind of stuff is also they're also considered very rebellious as well as gangro when uh looking seeing someone dressed like this in america in the 2000s and 90s wouldn't be that uncommon they'd be a little bit dressing up and a little bit crazy but it wouldn't be super weird and super strange and even considered ugly by some people um it in japan it's a very different thing and unfortunately, the culture is dying out due to many criticisms from people, even um, from other people in Shibuya and Shinjuku, telling them to get out of their cities um, and that they're part of the wrong generation and all of that stuff in modern days. They've been told all sorts of very demeaning stuff, as well as people online have criticized them, claiming that they do blackface and that they are culturally appropriating, which is something that I don't quite want to get into because I haven't formed a full opinion on whether it is blackface or cultural appropriation. Um, but a lot of people have been discouraged from dressing the way they like just because of that, and Gangudo has died out, and there are very few people left dressing in Gangudo now, um, which is very upsetting and very sad that a lot of people are so discouraged from dressing the way they like and they feel like presents themselves well uh, just because of online criticism and people telling them like that and the current gangudo girls that still dress that way and love dressing that way are so unbelievably strong for standing up to the um to ridiculously mean people that are um criticizing the way they dress and continuing to dress that way like some of their families even disprove and they have to sneak out of the house to be able to leave dressing the way they want to, which is crazy to me, but they are so unbelievably strong, and I think it's honestly a pretty cool fashion trend. Back in um, the mid or mid to late 2000s, it was a bit crazy and uh, a bit much for me, but definitely now, since it, it be it's become a little bit um, le a little bit more, I wonder how I would say it. It's become a little bit more manageable, I guess, and a little bit more. Um, the makeup is less vibrant and bright, and something that used to mar mark traditional Gangudo fashion is um, like super light highlighter highlight, um, like we wear now. It's just like super light and contrasting again a lot against their super um, pale skin, which was a little bit much for me. But that's kind of died down, and it's still a very cool thing, and it's very fascinating. 
and I really hope that soon enough more people will, um, not necessarily that more people will dress that way, that, but if people will feel like that way, way of dressing, um, that way of dress, that way of dressing, who knows, um, if that is a way to accurately represent them in a way they want to express themselves, they will be able to do it without facing as much criticism as they do today. This was a really long rant on Ganguro fashion and the way that it's dying out. I am not Ganguro and I am not Japanese, so I am absolutely not the most qualified person to talk about this, but this is still my opinion on the subject and what I gained from my research. If I said something wrong, please let me know in the comments below. Um, I'd love to know more about the thing from people who actually dress that way and people who do live in Japan and the beauty standards of Japan are more enforced on them than me. I am sort of an outsider looking in on this kind of stuff and it's very fascinating to me so like I said I'd absolutely love to learn more. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to press that subscribe button if you want to see more rants like this on modern anthropology and many other things and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye!